Black Americans have been criticized for a culture that denigrates school and work um, and exemplifies one uh, that uh, glor sorry, that glorifies uh, violence in uh, criminal life. And uh, no area is this more prevalent than music. But uh, is it also, um, but it also shows in its face when studious and hardworking black people are accused of acting white. Is the culture of black America toxic to its chances of success? Are the messages that young people are absorbing holding them back? So I want to explain this uh, uh, topic a little bit. Um, I I had a conversation to uh, with one of our um, of great panelists, uh, Tubi. Oh no! Yeah, <laughs> I said Tubi, not Doobie. Tubi. I said uh, oh no. Okay, all right. Well, we had a <laughs> well, we had a good conversation. Unfortunately, he couldn't be here. Um, but we, we were talking about like uh, what is black culture like in general, right? Um, black, especially black American culture, as opposed to other cultures like Caribbean American culture, right? Um, like immigrant culture, and like the messages that you see within uh, the black community, right? Some of the uh, uh, traits and behaviors, right? Which obviously we're generalizing here. Clearly, right? Um, but uh, uh, Tubi had a, a big issue um, with like what he saw, like especially when it comes to education and a lack of uh, uh, a lack of um, like valuing of that, right? Yeah. Um, so uh, he thought that that was a specific thing about black culture. And uh, we thought it'd be we thought it'd be a good topic, so here we are. Um, and you know we can cover all all, all all parts. So wherever you want to take this is fine. Um, but I hope that clears it up. So anyway, um, we'll uh, start with uh, B more for um, an, an intro, and we'll go around B more. When you have underserved communities out there without proper HVAC systems, where people are wearing jackets and fucking caps and indoors. Due to this under like underfunded fucking bullshit, they're using like mice, but they still have the middle balls in them. They're missing. So we have schools that are absolutely dilapidated throughout America. We have communities with fucking shit ass dial up internet, not dial up, but like fucking phone line ass internet. How do you, how do you expect kids to give a shit about fucking education when they, it's shit ass education? It's underfunded. Teachers are paid shit. All the majority, the best talent is going to the best communities, so the best communities can afford the best teachers. Like, if we're not going to address that issue first, we're just going to sit around and nag about the music. It's total bullshit. Uh, dream. I think this conversation always is going to compare like poor black people versus like poor people of other um, cultures and races and ethnicities. But then the issue that I always come across is like black people are unique and so that they lack a kind of historical, like a long history of unified culture kind of, or like they're, they're more like disconnected from their people's culture than other ethnicities are. And so that can like, that can bring a lot of challenges within itself and cause people not to focus on, you know, things like education and stuff like that, because, you know, on top of the, um, economic issues that black people have. There's a lot of like value system issues and not a, <clears throat> not a unified one. But then I also say like, at the same time, I'm pretty sure poor white people are having the same struggle issues as poor black people when it comes to, you know, they're not focused on education, right? Like poor people in general is just not, they're really gonna struggle. They're, they're gonna focus on survival at, at any means necessary rather than, oh, let's focus on trying to get us up through education and stuff like that. And so when when immigrants come over here, they're really just focused. They're like they're like they're sending people to like get up in in a better way. I, I can explain this further, but basically immigrants coming here is not cut from the same cloth as people like raised up and have generations of people here. They're really not and it's for uh, plenty of reasons we can talk about later. Sure. Uh definitely want to uh, talk about that uh Philly uh, did somebody say my the, my audio was messed up earlier? Uh, you're fine. Yeah, you're uh, fine. Good. Okay. Um. Yeah. So basically, um, what this is going to come down to, I feel like, uh, B more said, um, 
you know, if you go into some of these schools, uh, they're dilapidated. Um, not only the schools, the neighborhoods are neglected and dilapidated. And um, that that was kind of the point I was bringing up with uh, the tax thing earlier and uh, putting the tax dollars towards uh, things that we, uh, as a community, decide we need to put uh, the tax money to. Because if we leave it up to the government uh, solely, uh, we're left with the shit show we're in right now uh, in, in some of these uh, communities. Um, so, um, yeah, um, yeah, so I, I, I'll leave it at that. I just want to, you know, let the con the conversation kind of progress and then I I'll weigh in as we go along. Okay, as it. Yeah, I still think the, uh, I, I generally think that, well, I agree with B-more first and foremost, um, but I do have to say that I feel like the problem is over it's like hyperbolic at times um we underestimate the potential of people that are uh of, of our youth and um we don't emphasize the the positive images and media and figures out who are like who are contemporary to you know us so it's uh we oftentimes you know there's we always put a lot of attention on the the speck of dust in our eye and not you know see that you know the rest of our body is is able so you know it's you know yeah i i i understand the um the, the sentiments but i still feel like you know even as an educator there's a lot of potential um that the youth has and there's you know changing the the problem with education the problem with music um i think this is just like I'm gonna be the Christian on the panel. This is just a world, you know. This, this is how the world is, you know. You know, that's the the afflictions, the 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 bad things, uh, the 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 uh, fiscal inequality. You know, that's just things that you know has been here since the beginning of time, and you know, I don't foresee it changing for a while. So I feel like you know, there's we can do the best we can with what we have, and you know, talking about the problems is okay. Um, but I don't want to give it too much, you know, too much power because it, it ends up just distracting, you know, and then while it, it, while it's being a distraction, it oftentimes stifles the amount of progress that, uh, we could be, uh, having. Thank you. All right. Um, no, nah, leave me more out, man. Let, <laughs> him his, let him finish his league game. Man. Shit's <laughs> over. <laughs> we um, code ass have, take, bro. Uh, code yeah. ass take. I'll come at you later. So you should have, uh, you should have played Scion, bro. Scion means you should have, you should have played a better position. That's what you should have done. Okay. Yeah. No, yeah. All right. Um. Uh, sorry, <laughs> everything's moved around on my screen, but I'll try to make sure I get everyone. So let's go to Wiggle first and Black and. Oh yeah. 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 Um. Yeah. I mean, I I would be amiss if I didn't say that there was a uh, aspect of like um internalized racism that uh, comes out in some music or like in some acts that people do um the same way that there's internalized sexism uh you could uh, you could see that uh there perhaps are women that may take a stance because they are oppressed they're in a patriarchal system and uh they could take a stance um that is them empowering themselves based off of being in this oppressed system and being aware of it that outside entities will look in and say oh there's a problem with that but you know this is how individuals deal with that level of oppression the same way uh, if black individuals are oppressed in the society they live in and then they portray this through music and it's empowering for them uh, it's very easy for outward individuals to look at it and then be like oh look you know like this is why you're oppressed you know this is why this is what this is exactly the problem when it's uh I, I think that's i think that's what's going on to some degree to a large degree actually and i just want to remind people that like uh, it's largely white individuals that are funding uh black yes. music it's largely white individuals that are consuming uh, uh black music and everybody in the world is listening to black people in the united states uh make their music and they're listening to it and consuming it however it, now it's a problem with black communities and it's perpetrated because of their music and it's their music and it's them and it's their they're the ones who are absorbing this and like the idea that it's black people that are the only people creating this music is funny too uh, you acknowledge that most of the wealth exists within individuals that are white so the idea is just that there aren't white rappers there aren't white dribble rappers there aren't white people creating this music out there no there are it's just 
it's the same white uh it's uh it's the same white structure that chooses the black person to be the face of the music they're the same people that are like we want a black face to this music that we want to support um there's plenty of white rappers out there there's there's asian rappers there's all sorts of rappers um there's there's like a, all over the place it's just the the envisionment that we see is what white america wants us to see because that's what they're purport uh that's what they're proposing that's what they want to sell that's what sells right now is a black face doing the music and a black face uh per performing this we see it with TikTok. you look at TikTok and people are always complaining that it's white people appropriating a certain culture um, one week it's uh, lat uh, it's Latino culture, another week it's Black culture. They're appropriating this music, um, but that's because it's free. And there's a lot of people that once they get a phone, go on TikTok. It might be a little bit more expensive to make like hip hop music, etc. But it's the same. It's like there are white people doing it. It's just the people that get the most of the money are Black people because of white people. Okay, let's go to uh, Black Mac and Um, yeah, I think that. One, America as a whole has never prioritized education. Um, we like to pretend we did, but even everyone, you know, regardless of race, if you have like a cultural background to this country, you all know, looking back to your grandfather's uh, gen grandfather's generation, you all know of so either an aunt, uncle, or someone, you know, 60 or older who says that they had a fourth grade education or a seventh grade education and then they went and joined the field or they went and worked in the oil rig or whatever they did so like education has never been prioritized it's where we came up with the concept of the nerd being like something that's shamed on so i wouldn't apply that specifically to black people i just think that's a part of american culture um i think i think the the something else um was mentioned in the title was the con uh, the topic of talking white i believe that this is something that this is something that really happened but I think feel like this is this is like our generation's PTSD. <laughs> There's a lot of black people well, between 20 and between 20 and 35 who had this experience. But I don't think it I don't think it's carried over. Thankfully, I don't know. I know a lot of kids 12 and under, and I don't think that's like a phrase they're super familiar with. I, so I like while it really happened and it's something that probably you know a lot of people have some level of trauma connected to i don't think it was i don't think it was as generational as we seem to make it to be and make it out to be um but that doesn't make it not not real not valid not something worth talking about because a lot of people will deny past things that we all know happen just like the kind the idea of like kids who liked anime or liked Pokemon, things like that. Everyone says like, no one made fun of you because of that. Yes, they did. It, it was a thing. It happened. We knew it happened. Let's not deny it. But um, the last thing I'll say before we go into the thing is to the open is um, black culture does have probably does have some level of violence um, connected to it. That doesn't mean it's always like shooting or killing, but we don't always handle our emotions with words whether that be in the household or out of the household sometimes we handle our emotions in physical outlets like you know everybody had to deal with something revolving around whooping you know like if you get mad at somebody y'all have to shoot the fair one you know one-on-one -on -one, whatever so that's this is probably true related to black culture and i don't think it has to be a bad thing i think it's just different yeah. and something that'll change over time My thank bad. you oh, thank you so much joe lewis yeah um based on the the topic prompt i guess the question of the topics i missed a little bit of the middle um i just think people are quick to find cop outs to problems like mm -hmm. we've known that there's problems within education um for a considerable amount of time we know that income is directly connected to that um, we don't seem to be having these conversations about the atrocities of the culture and all those nice rich communities that have the fundings for their schools, whether that be because of housing or direct funding due to a handful of individuals within the community. Um, but then when you look at communities that are underserved, then all of a sudden it's about the culture. It's all, oh, there's the problem. Like if we're just going to uplift these cultures of people, then it's going to tell you that it's like, no, like economic determines social. So if you're in a situation that is economically dis dis disadvantageous, you're going to have a community that's going to be in disadvantageous outcomes. And I think when it comes to 
I guess culture broadly, if you're going to try to solve a problem, you have to work on circumstance alleviation. So it's like, what are the circumstances that are leading into these outcomes that you find unsatisfactory? And then approaching it from there. Um, uh, there was something about acting white, right? But it also shows in the faces to studies of working class black people are accused of acting white. Yeah, I could see that. Um, it's very clear that certain language is considered acceptive in the mainstream culture. So, of course, you're going to have people who are black, Asian, Latino. Like You're going to have people just code switching into ways that are considered like acceptable within dominant culture. Um, do I think that's OK? No, I think that you should be able to talk however you want to talk and express yourself however you want to express yourself without feeling um, the need to change who you are just for the sake of getting a job. Um, we're a little bit better than that now than when I was growing up, but yeah, I think a lot of the, the black culture critiques are kind of over conflated and it's just like white people wanting to be upset at something that they have no idea what, what they're talking about. Generally speaking. All right. Open to the panel. I want to make a quick point. And I think what, what are uh, the main factors that determine like success, success and especially with their education system is probably um, motivation, good habits and discipline. And maybe you need motivation to develop good habits and you need discipline, motivation to have discipline to develop good habits. But um, I think there's a plenty of black families that already inhibit that. Like I went to HBC, I went to Morehouse and the AUC in Atlanta. You, and when I was in Atlanta, you saw a bunch of good, you know, black families that had great motivation and developed good habits, you know, very successful black families and stuff like that. So it's like, we have these out there. And so when you think about what people, you know, when you hear like, oh, but this is black culture, they're really, I think they're really talking about poor black people. Cause you don't see like upper middle class income, black people really like exhibit these, these mm. problems that people are really talking about. So it's really about poor black people. But and the majority you, of black people you, are but, poor black people. But you, you don't need that. You don't need I, that shit. I, I, you don't need. I, you don't need motivation or any of that shit. Like, I, like you're in an upper middle class area, and like it's it's access. The first most important thing is the, the access to the stuff. Sure, sure. It's like if you have all this stuff around you all the time, uh, you don't have to be motivated. Like the uh, the uh, upper middle class schools, there's tons of students that aren't motivated, that don't care much, and then they're coddled through the process. They're yep. pushed through sure, classes, sure, sure. they're coddled through Literally, it, and then yeah, since it's all around you, you're always learning. The, whether you, like, let's say you're not good at math and you really don't like math, those students may fail at math and then they're pushed into another class until they learn math. But then there's something else there that they can excel at. They're like, well, there's somebody who says, well, you know what, Timmy, you're really good at, like, uh, you're really good at art, and we have a great art program. And then the kid's like, oh, that is cool. And then there's something else for them. But let's say your yep. school doesn't have those programs and all you do is have is like you only have a limited schedule or a limited program uh and a lot of like upper middle class schools and stuff like um people have access to other avenues to enjoy themselves so like the motivation aspect is part of access is like you can find an outlet to to, to fuel your boredom sure Ac access we can add that in there too but the, the point i'm making is that in order to get to that point to get to have access, I do think you need motivation, good habits, and discipline. Of course, when you, once when you already have access, no, huh? They need the funding. Sure, sure. And how do you get funding? I mean, let's say you're starting nothing, right? And then you don't have access to funding, and somebody just giving you money. You yeah. can get yourself there through motivation, good habits, discipline. Some just some bootstrap shit. Yeah, you, yeah, no, you don't I'm need. Saying, you don't need. Saying, listen, I'm but we need, to stop, we need to stop. Can we need I, to let stop. Let me flesh, let me flesh out my stuff. idea, please. You let me flesh oh, that you, out. You seem to have like. I out. haven't fleshed it out. Like, let me, uh, yeah, let me flesh I'm kind of used to. I, I agree to your point, Wiggle, that access is 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 a great factor of success, right? What I'm talking about is like when these like really poor people from different countries come to the United States and are comparative to the poor people, like in, ter in terms of their status, like they come to America, they, they also live in a project, you know, I'm, I'm, ta I'm talking Ethiopian, Nigerian families, they're moving in the projects in a, in a poor black neighborhood. But they excel because they're very like motivated. This is your argument. I don't I'm, think they're I'm, usually that poor when they come here. 
Exactly. Thank you. Uh, they, 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 generally speaking, they come here up a little more. And then there's um, also pre historical situations in the past where our government prioritized immigrant black immigrants when it came to small yeah. business loans over black uh, Americans that were here to begin with. So like just a, a lot of people don't want to look into the fine details, but just simply saying, I'm not saying it, Dream's saying this, but the, the rhetoric, this rhetoric tends to be wrapped around the concept for, or the belief for, that uh, that immigrants are just like better. For The part that's funny for me is that like, even in like, even in good schools, those same people will excel beyond like uh, yes. the, indiv the individuals that have access. So yes, those may be good traits that you want in your students, but you don't need them to excel because there's students that excel without any of those things. I didn't say you need them. You did. You started. No, I, with, I like, said. I you said you want to have are... these three things. These are no, 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 no. The, the, what I my wording was that these are um, highly important. Like keep going. Kind of like predictors of success. They're they're not inherently. They're not necessary. Like luck is a huge part of success too. Like you can get lucky and be successful. I'd say the, we don't. We don't even need to talk. What, but that's so. That's more, what we need in the education system is luck. Yeah, I, I no, we throw a little more. Sprinkle it in there. Bam. Yeah, you keep, get get your mind. Get, when get you're out saying, of this need stuff. I'm never saying need. Oh, oh, I like to talk about needs. And, uh, yes. I, mean, what, <laughs> I like no, to talk no, about no. improving people's You conditions. don't need luck. I don't know. No, well, I, I don't know why you even talk made the yeah. claim. I, I, don't, I think everything you talk about was, that. Yeah. was correct. But like, I think it was correct on... I don't think it. I don't think it's a a systemic solution. Like if I was speaking to an individual person or an individual family, like it, I would. That's the types of thing I was like. I was like, you you probably need more discipline because discipline is a huge predictor on the individual person's like um, form of success. Like anybody denying that as being uh, being ridiculous, but like that doesn't mean that you can. We can use these individual solutions and apply them to systemic problems. Like. Uh, what be more said about uh, funding is the by far the biggest factor, but I, I don't think that's I don't think well, I don't what think about, that's what it about, that's, what that's about not it though. What about athletes that uh, excel? They have great discipline with the sports that they participate in, but they constantly uh, there's a there's a, they constantly need help when it comes to their academics. They need coddling when it goes through academics because they they, they exhibit the traits of someone that understands discipline. They are well disciplined when it comes to the things that they enjoy, and then they need help. When it comes to the other things, they so don't need academic idea of one type of discipline. Well, now, they, where do we see on, athletes as young now? Let's, that's not, let's make sure no, that's not what before, nobody's saying. Right? Like <laughs> it, the idea that athletes don't need academics is, is a really old take. We know that you still need to go through school and do well academically, but we do know at the same time that coaches, professors, academic advisors, superintendents, principals, councils are all complicit in the money machine that sports make. Where it's like, if you had the choice to hold back Michael Vick from the bowl game because he's failing statistics, do you want to be the teacher that does that? Like, do you want to be that, have the have that on your record that you held back a, a, a potential Division Hall of Fame? Yeah. Like, and like, no, no teacher wants that. So they'll toe the line a little bit. Like, and as much as like people want to say this doesn't happen, it still does. Like, you'll see professors who like will look a blind eye on their attendance policy when it comes to the D1, their, their number one prospect in there. Some academic advisors are even crazy enough to, to mark that within their academic record, which you're not supposed to do. But when a player is so popular, then it kind of gets their word of mouth. Um, I think by and large, like for me, the problem that I have is that so much of academic su success is directly strapped to cost and it's direct to cost from the jump. Like we, we know that SAT scores aren't an indicator of how well you are as a student. It just shows how well you can take a test. And also it kind of also sort of explains your academic, excuse me, your financial stability. Um, we, mm -hmm. we know this and, and people know this walking in, but we still held that as such as a high metric for going into universities now granted like schools are looking to um do away from that re most recently um a school that comes to mind i think it's harvard mm -hmm. that just um dismissed that for their 2022 school year which is a step in the right direction but i think for a lot of individuals like, they need... that's temporary though so far right and yeah. i think it should be because of covid personally. though yeah. Well, I mean, I, I guess they're going to run tests if you're doing something. Well, some, I think some it's okay to see how it's... Yeah, some of them indefinitely. But 
you you can um, see you can see things with choice structures like uh, like uh, uh, as soon as like uh, students have uh, more ability to choose like let's say like uh, you're going into you're going into undergraduate uh, studies and then you have more I you have more of a uh, a choice structure to choose which classes you want are these kids choosing the hardest professors that in, uh, they increase the highest level of discipline that give them like that have a higher chance of giving them bad grades but they learn the most or do they nope. choose the easiest classes the classes yep. that guarantee them the best GPAs. And like, uh, I'm trying to find the easiest. I'm looking at the history. Yeah. Well, let's That's not it. get stuck. Let's not get stuck in a conversation about the educational system. Like, Why not? When it's like like when the leading contributors no. and, and, and like raising the community up. Because these factors remain for all communities. It's not something that's yeah. just and some communities particular. are over are, are doing just well, like perfectly fine. It's like it's weird that we have this value in America that everybody's equal, but when it comes down to like price per head, like we give these communities less money and then these communities more money and then we sit and just simply say well it's dictated on property taxes so it is what it is like now like this uh, honestly at this point well, i believe also, america needs to come to a collective agreement how much is a student worth per year and ensure that that's the floor and that absolutely everybody gets it and that's it so if you live in a rich community and you want your school to be better then you also got to fight for that community that's in detroit but nah, like, what, what you mean? Get off of this subject. Like, we're talking about. Oh, what, what's up? Detroit, Detroit school system specifically has like some of the like highest funding per like specifically because you said Detroit. Detroit has some of the highest funding per student in the nation. Like, I think uh, funding is important, but I think we I think we oversimplify it when we say we overestimate funding. We overestimate. Yeah. Funding. It's, it's very high. Like, well, mm, you, you need to know where no. you need to know where the you need to track where the funding is going. You need to track not even where it's going. It's used. like yeah, how it's used and and because you, you need you, to track. You how, how if it's being if it's remaining within the community like you we oftentimes will talk about how like uh, often there's other people from outside the community who work within of that school system and none of those resources are being funneled back into the community because of like like uh, uh almost like a few hundred grand a year is going back into like the suburb the suburbs next door like uh we don't often talk about those you know situation so oftentimes we just like blame the tax situation so there's a lot of times where you know there's like a, a a brain there's like a talent drain and a financial drain from the communities that are mm -hmm. at most need there's, there's, also, goes into, there's also an goes aspect into other communities there's also an aspect of like the teachers themselves right like, like yeah i was gonna if say you're, the teachers if, if you're a teacher like you probably they don't you, live there. Yeah. you probably want to teach at like the schools that have the most resources um, the schools that offer you the most pay and have the best resources. So it's like, I mean, like, and then you'd want the best teachers for your students. So like, there, there there's an avenue of that. It's like, if you're Honestly, in a certain community, you would have better teachers. And then I think we're in a mixed company right are here. Are more like, likely to come here. So I, I, don't know, like, I, we, not, I don't see any like strong, rapid so conservatives real quick. in this conversation. Like, can yeah. we just go a little deeper than the surface? Like, and the, yeah. on the topic that I think Prime was going for is a culture thing. I do believe that there is. I do believe that all funding, like all funding equal, there still probably is some cult cultural elements that will that will probably take generations to fix within the black community. Yeah, how do you fix that? You fix that by improving the areas where, where they live and including improving education. Improving if, if you have a smarter populace, yeah. then they can, they're, they're better apt to fix their own communities. Y'all guys want to downplay funding when Jersey, uh, uh, Connecticut, if you take a look at all the best top, um, the best states when it comes to education, they spend per pupil $6,000, $8,000 more per student. Like uh, what is it? Like uh, sh like uh, what is it? Mich Michigan spends around twelve or thirteen k per pupil, but then you take a look at Jersey that spends twenty, New York that spends twenty six. Like yeah, there's some crazy so, so shit no going on. Is what, 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 no, no, I know, but it happened real quick, and I just what, had to address. What, what is what, what were you saying, Bam? With a with the idea of like culture, there is a let's just say, like, accept that there's a cultural thing within the black community. Like where where because like like in this and in, in this idea, like I live in a relatively like white area. These the, the the people around here they love, uh, they love every bit of black culture they can get a hold of. They yeah. they they, they love over. what they see on TV. They I'm about to say they don't they don't yeah they go to the hood. So and they isn't feel this exact? So isn't this exactly what B Moore is describing? 
mm -hmm. of just like, and this is exactly what Joe Lewis describes as uh, economics first, then going to the social and then mm -hmm. fixing, like fixing those things. So why does that have to do with culture versus like the economic situation? Well, because the, the, because the wives because of Atlanta, the, the, the hot wives of Atlanta are all married to doctors. Because so it like, very much seems like the culture is really similar. <laughs> uh, the difference is the economics. Hold on, like, but talking about the, multi. <laughs> Nobody gives about Atlanta housewives, bro. The, why, the sure wives, the you know wives, but they're married Nobody doctors. Cares. They own businesses. Like, have, 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 you, have you been the Have you been the Buckhead? Have you seen how nice it's there? I lived there for a while. It's super fucking beautiful. Like, get over it. Some parts but of Atlanta no, are doing very well. You're missing a point. And then you you're take like a zone you're six. A point. I'm not talking about the geography. About and it's terrible. You're missing a point. You're missing no, a point. It's like I'm not talking about the. I'm not talking about the 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 geography of. And like the, I'm not talking about the geography. The, I'm talking the, about the funding. I'm talking me, about the funding of the well. okay, I'm talking of, as I'm the point. The main point was the, there's media there that we often, you know, downplay, you know, and 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 say that it's 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 degrading the culture. But a lot of those people, they're business owners. They're financially astute. Uh, they're highly motivated. Yeah, they profit off of the the, the worst parts of society. But you know they're they're doing just as well as a lot of your the a lot of the parts of society that we say are the better thing you know the better oh, we man. should turn our eyes towards I this mean, nobody gives a shit about this I'm, I'm actually curious azzy like i'm asking an uncomfortable question if i go online right now and look at the executive producers and producers of um probably white the housewives of atlanta like am i gonna find a majority black executive producer they're probably producer they're body? probably they're probably white, but I'm talking about oh, okay. the, the, no, okay. but. Gotcha. Thank you. But hold on, hold on, hold on. The caveat is the viewer and the consumer doesn't care about the people behind the camera. They care about the um, people who well, are I'm on the camera. Graphics here right now of Real Housewives of Atlanta. I don't think you want me to read these out loud. I'll just make sure it take really short. Well, what about uh, Lorraine or Glenda? Hold on, hold on one second. Let me, answer, let me answer Willow's question because it's mm -hmm. like seven things away. Like, the, I'm saying that I think it's being dishonest to say that, like, Four, we can have 400 years. Uh, we understand that poverty leads to poverty as a kind of poverty is the problem was the root of the uh, problem. But doing that for 400 years is going to lead to um, worse societal behaviors for the community that it affects. Whether that be like whether it be like our a lot of our political views or whether okay, so it be how does that affect how does that affect education? Mm -hmm. I'm, but I'm saying it. That's what I'm saying. I'm not. I feel like we're being. I feel like we're being too surface level because we feel like we're. We feel like we're. In, we're in talking to. We're not dealing with a mixed group conversation. We're Ooh, dealing I, with. Like, I, like I would. Uh, I, I would agree that there's a level of internalized yeah. racism that could happen. But then you have racism. substantiant. Well, when you're talking about like the the historic oppression of like black people for hundred years, I would assume that it's like you're talking Rubs about off. racism. Yeah. But no, like I, uh, outside I'm of in, about, I'm talking about. The, I'm just talking about the way that. The way that the outside things that we consider are okay, yeah, outside uh, the thing, the things that there's a lot of things that we consider in our community to be normal or to be justified because of because of a historical place that we've been put in that probably racism. aren't healthy. That's like racism. Like anyway. you think it's the product of racism. racism. It's the if, product. If, it's the product of racism. Yeah. Yeah. It's so a product is, of racism. But yes. it's not racism. So this would be about racism. This would be internal. Like if you feel some way because of like racism. And then you you see it as like the structures around you or what have you. This could be internalized racism. Like if you think that as a black, like for example, if you think as a black male that you have to be like um, extremely masculine or you have to believe that you have to be able to fight people or you have to believe that you have to have a, like a huge penis or something. Like this is internalized racism. The same way like if you are, uh, uh, let's say you are a woman and you feel that you have to be extremely like courteous towards men you feel like you have extreme you have to be very pretty you have to have look you have to be able to look at yourself in a mirror and think that you're beautiful and work towards that that's internalized sexism this is something that you're living in because of some systemic structures i don't know i don't know i think looking good is 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 a, a commonality I don't, I don't, amongst all no, of us no, no, <laughs> i don't know I People like looking at pretty things. That's not yeah, just Yeah, but like you don't. Do you section. paint your face? Do you paint your face, Azzy? Pretty. I know, but he, Prinia, gets, he gets a fresh I know, cut Prinia, and shaved I get a. <laughs> Yo, bro, I guess on, grooms himself. I, 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 I don't. I don't. Come on. Come on. Let's come on. This is fucking childish. Like, putting a do rag on at night is not equivalent to doing makeup every damn day. Let me try. So, somebody, I think it was Dream, said earlier what. 
the biggest predictor of um, success is going to be. And the biggest predict predictor of success is not uh, grit or determination or, um, you know, uh, self-motivation. It's none of those things. It's wealth. Um, and the successful people in this country um, come from or had started out with uh, wealth. And um, I, I, I get the sense that a lot of people aren't to aren't too into the idea of uh, the government uh, getting poor people out of the situation they're in when historically uh, in this country, when there's been any amount of, of uh, a, a huge percentage of the population who are in poverty or a certain segment of the population who are in poverty, it's been the government who has uh, reached into those communities and infused it with jobs, um, funding money um you know whether it was the 1930s uh under franklin roosevelt and the new deal or whether you can go just 10 12 years ago to uh the great recession we just had um and the people who are bailed out of these situations are overwhelmingly um people who uh aren't already poor um and or excuse me are are white and are not um they're not already poor. And um, somebody also said um, that the majority of black people in this country are poor. Um, that I, I want to contest that a little bit, depending on how you define uh, poor, because um, according to about working uh, class is poor, not just below the poverty line. I don't think that the poverty line is a good definer of like what poor looks like. So right, people okay. living in a check to check lifestyle, I, that's the majority of Americans, but it's, it's especially so with black people. Okay. I just wanted to just make sure we were, we were clear on that. Um, and, but, but, okay. Yes. Yeah. And if y'all want to get into the, uh, the finer things and I be more, our Bam, uh, Bam said you want to dig a little bit deeper. Um, it's, it's, it's generational trauma it's it's ptsd uh it's the lack of mental health uh the black community um has shunned mental health uh for generations um i can i mean not, of course not everybody i'm just speaking generally um i think everybody on this panel can um you said I, I, well, ptsd what uh, else tv uh, uh, i'll recommend you speak for yourself right because look, me mental health care oh. is so inacce inaccessible to Americans, right? There's so many health insurance policies out there. They'll give you dental, they'll give you vision, they'll give you general health, but they won't even give you mental health. You know how much it is to cost to see a psychiatrist or see a psychologist? Is, 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 it, it, it's my point. That doesn't go against no, my point at no, all. It, no, the reason why is like if you want if you want people to stop shunning something, at first it has to be accessible. It's easy for somebody okay. to write off something that they can't access, right? Now, if, if there was like a... a, a if, if, if accessibility wasn't an issue if black people had the ability to access mental health care similarly to white people right and then at that point we had abysmal rates then i, I think this conversation will be definitely more important but i just strictly due to the extreme lack of uh of availability right i don't really care it's not that big of an issue it's not that well, it would be a bigger issue when it was available best uh medical coverage in this company in this country or or in terms of mental health people who are medicaid okay so welfare provides you access to mental health okay. treatment I, like, I don't, I, 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 I don't, don't talk over Philly because his microphone his microphone isn't that good if you talk I, over him you can't really hear him at all I, I still think that like um it would be the first thing you said is like wealth is a bigger indicator because like um dream suggested earlier with like certain immigrants and like uh, uh what they bring to the table like what are the what are the rates of like uh uh i don't know like uh, asian immigrants to the united anyone from asia indian uh chinese japanese what have you a asian immigrants to the united states what are their rates of utilizing uh psychiatric care in the united states versus mm -hmm. the rates of success yeah, I was gonna say uh, like mental yeah. health issues and immigrants, they they dis these destigmatize that hella. Like they do that as much as a black Americans, if not more. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They don't care about mental health in Morocco. They don't care about mental yeah, health it, in it China. It seems like a or, or southern white thing. Just in terms of oh, housekeeping, Philly really dropped out of the call. So, so, so if there was somebody you wanted to address them directly yeah. here. Psy psychiatric uh psychiatric care etc like um i moved them back psychiatric care etc i believe that yeah that is an important thing uh but i don't like the idea of shoehorning it in as like a reasoning for like uh 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 let's say some form of under and underperformance in like the black community um, sure it is 
we but we where do you but see it in like uh other minority groups that do succeed to that extent like was brought up earlier um i i don't i don't like and then you'd have to you'd have to Are we talking about other minority groups yeah why but why wouldn't you why would you why so do you think that talking about what do you mean why wouldn't you because we're talking about black americans right now okay and and, and then, I, the other reason so i brought that easily. up was because so easily other... what if you're a black american you're seen as a black American, but you're not a descendant of slavery and then you now about your your who your, said anything about slavery yeah so like what if you are like let's say from africa your family and then you move uh -huh. to the united states now you're black american then this okay. would still hold true that your family would likely oh, have you probably would need you probably would have suffer from the same mental health issues that black americans by and large do but you would so have a similar stigma unique. against you would still have a similar stigma against like psychiatric care why? Well, that's, I, don't, I, don't think so. I think I can draw a thread to something that Philly said, which I think is important. Um, and this is why I think like the idea of not talking about education is a really like ridiculous thing to do, because education in the United States isn't exclusively education. It's it's been it's used for so many other things. It's the first exposure that children have to healthcare. It's the first exposure that children have to psychiatric services. It's the first exposure yep. that most children will have to an actual like system in terms of like social social programs like like lunches and shit and access to libraries. And I think that like something that can be done is making those systems better for students because like for me i believe that in america education's sole purpose is to create workers and whether like that rubs you the wrong way or not i'd, I'd be hard pressed to to be proven otherwise like it's just designed to create workers and whatever the profession may be and if that's the goal, then we have to make sure that the services around this are to the best of their ability. And it, by and large, I think that a lot of schools in the United States gave students a apprehension towards things like healthcare, towards things like psychiatric services, towards things like law enforcement. Because um, for a lot of children and the end up being young adults, this is the first exposure they have to these systems. And if they have a bad experience in school, with a resource officer, then of course they're going to have a bad experience with with a um, with a law enforcement officer, or if they have a bad experience with a guidance counselor. Maybe they're not going to have a good experience with their academic advisor in college. If they have a bad experience with a teacher in mathematics, maybe that bad teacher they had in mathematics is going to influence their ability and their approach to, to mathematics broadly down the line. And like, there's a lot of evidence to support this. And Which I just think why... that. The, the only reason I brought up the, the only reason I brought up like going deeper specifically with, with Joe was because I think that everyone in the, I think everyone in this conversation agrees with that. I think everyone in, agrees with the concept that we need to increase funding. I think everyone agrees about the concept of like education being one of the biggest uh, predictors of, of future wealth and like you know better outcomes. We all agree sure. with that. I'm saying since, since we since we're in mixed company and we all really agree on this and prom's community is generally left leaning and they probably all agree education is super important and funding is super important is there can we can we look deeper within and figure out like if we fix funding if we fix education is the black community and white community now complete like is everything perfect is the, are we equal now or is there still some probably so deeper issues with okay. well, I, well, I, mean, I, mean, I agree with philly i agree with philly and i agree with like wiggles when they talk about wealth is the biggest predictor, of course, I agree. It's Everybody agrees business. with that. Yeah, of course. That's, that's, that's the root of it all. That's, that's yeah, of course, of course. I don't think it's all. I agree with wealth. But, but what's relative, of it all but what's, but what's relative to this conversation? I, I agree. Like, wealth is a huge is a huge factor because, like, they can afford to lose and they don't have to worry about, you know, where to get food and stuff and shelter, all of that. So, of course, they can take a risk they that benefits their education. family. Yeah, exactly. But the point I'm making is, like, the point I'm making is, like, like even immigrants that come to the United States without wealth, right? They're probably still statistically more likely to succeed on a higher level than than Black Americans, even though well, they are. Right, exactly. I mean, so the point like, is, it, like, well, 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 better, well, well, better, well, better, well, better first, funding, well, better this, funding, well, better this, schools, well, better education. This. Uh, reduce the amount. Like, will, will that make other races stop killing Black people less? 
asking the question. Is I'm not, I don't <laughs> yeah, yeah. The point I'm, like, I don't even understand. Education. What that Hold on, like, no, as he got a weird, I don't even know what that means. Because I mean, like, okay, okay, so, so, so let me, no, because that's about race. Let's word it this way. Like, if we, like, I just really want to set the floor here, right? Like. My mother was born in 1933. She lives in a world where she couldn't be around black people until she was 21. She didn't really have full access to her reproductive rights until she was 38. She was already done having children at that point. She had five children, five surviving children, of which that she had seven that did not. So like my mother lives in a, in a country that's not that far removed from the reality that we're living in right now. And you're not going to social problem you're you're these things away from americans like, i i know it's a it's a hard pill to swallow but the only way that seems to get people on board is through legislation uh, like, also, it, but, uh, that's but, uh, but, why, why look at immigrants? but like legislation why and cope like why, I, why, I don't know like, what the why, look, why look at immigrants as the example when it's like first and foremost if you took that immigrant and then you pose them towards like uh the individuals in their own country uh they it would be like they would also be probably like a uh, some level of star achiever like they would also be some level of successful um like uh so like what is the idea of I, I was i was gonna bring that up too yeah but like, let's say you you bring a poor person from a from a country and you're you take them here, like a refugee, for example, right? I've I've met refugees. It don't oh, always have to be poor. No, 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 I met I've met poor Let's refugees. Right we give, I, we give I, them I, a housing. We give I've been. Um, if you would like to speak uh, to some of them later on, I'll, I'll connect you with some of them. Point, please, stream. <laughs> the point I'm making is that I've specifically seen it with my own eyes. I've known these friends. Oh, like man. I've known. I don't understand. The, the point I'm making is that there's something obviously other than. Ed, um money right that we can maybe understand to help people Mental health i'm telling you we give I mean, these immigrants I mean, we give these which we is give why these migrants money <laughs> we give I mean, them money I mean, and dream, education no, no, that's no, not dream, always dream. that's why i say I mean, that's, that's why so like that's, so money manifests itself in different ways, right? Like, sure, we can say that, hey, having money in hand, in pocket, is, is something that's going to drastically change your outcomes. But for those who can't, due to a lot of reasons that might lead to no circumstance of our own, the government has decided time and time again that, hey, we should probably help these individuals. It's the same reason why in Jersey we're allowing undocumented immigrants to have driver's licenses. Because, like, we understand that, hey, this is something that you need in this state to literally survive in a lot of areas then the least that we can do is to make this process as easy as possible is that lowering the bar of scrutiny to 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 america to like blood breathing whatever the fuck americans no it's like hey this is a requirement now in society so let's make sure that everybody has this requirement it's the same reason why you can like immigrants cannot be denied in schools because of their immigrant status like this is, this is why we had a problem with DACA in the first place where we've agreed that there are certain resources available to americans that should be available to all people within the borders of this country like we, we've accepted that so like yeah like there are ways that we can help individuals that aren't exclusively monetary based, but still by and large, like mon monetary based, like things are going to help individuals. Okay. What do you oh, want to say? I want to try to back up. That. I want to try to help up a uh, dream and maybe bam. I don't know. Um, but like, it seems like you guys have acknowledged, right? Like with be more answer, like a, a, a while ago, seems to acknowledge that there is it's some sort of cultural difference here, right? Between uh, Black Americans and then immigrants in general, right? Um, now, there are some who, like, I, I think looking at immigration patterns um, sorry, uh, is important because those immigration patterns tell us a lot, right? Like, if, um, if you are, if a population from a certain country is coming here uh, because they are wealthy, because they can, right? Um, that's like different from another population that's like fleeing, right? Um, like whether they're re quote unquote refugees or not, but the fact that they're fleeing because some disaster happened, right? Like, like, uh, those are, even if they come from the same nation, right? Those two populations are going to be different and have different outcomes. Okay. But, uh, we know, we know, um, that a lot of immigrant pop, uh, a lot of immigrant populations, they have a different, um, attitude towards um certain things like education right when you come from an immigrant family it's not a question of will you go to college 
right? Like you, you will, that's going to happen, right? Uh, it's just like, how much is it going to cost? Like it's, it's, it's not an if, um, and that changes things. That really does change things of the, the dynamic, right? When there's an expectation of academic excellence, right? Where there's like uh, no other option. Now, a lot of those uh, refi or, sorry, not refugees, excuse me, uh, immigrants can also um, be poor as well, right? Not all uh, uh, immigrants who come here uh, are wealthy. We all already know this. A lot of them are poor, but they can still have better outcomes because of the attitude. The attitude actually does make a difference. Yeah, I was gonna say. Uh, like, I was gonna say which is why reasons. it's three oh, specific God. reasons that the why I would dream and what Prom says is true. Number one, if you're coming here as an immigrant and you like and you buy into the American dream, you're going to have a better attitude to towards the system of education. If you've been generation, if you've generationally seen generationally seen like negative. Um, negative return from education like uh, as many like american natives that black americans have and you come here and you say like if you work hard enough you can be any you know do anything like if you push that on your children you're going to increase the likelihood of having success from the education system this is objectively true number two um oh yeah number two is specifically the like we have first or whether we like it or not we have first world um levels of lifestyle expectations there's things that we consider um the things that we we wouldn't put up with that people coming from like third world countries are more likely to like we work we we say all the time no one should have to work more than 40 hours a week yes some parents work doubles and yes some parents work you know might work the 60 hours a week but for a lot of these third world immigrant con uh people they work 16 hour days seven days a week not because they're like better people but just because it's more reasonable to what they were doing like th that that was how they grew up it was more reasonable for what they were doing in their home country because they didn't have these levels of labor laws it's not that it's like reasonable it's, uh, it's, but, like, but i'm saying but it's, on, it, it's reasonable for their country american and, don't get wiggle you about to give that first world American the perspective. Thing. no and it's not the, first world as shit bro it's not reasonable it's uh, the idea that like it's the idea that that's what you need to live that's what you need to get by. Is that reasonable? But it's I'm like, saying, and, but I'm saying, but, but we're saying it's not reasonable based on our first world expectations. I'm saying, and no, they're in the, I'm in saying the country, literally, they, it's not reasonable. They just, it's we, what they need understand to do. To we just, you understand, we we picked forty hour work weeks like arbitrarily. Like that's like that, there's nothing that says that this is the right amount of time. It's yeah, okay. Shorter. Do you think they we, chose we sixteen hour work weeks? Because they're I'm like saying it's also hour arbitrarily. Days. I'm saying, I'm saying. I'm saying that we can't decide that one is no, right or one is wrong. No, it's not arbitrary. No, 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 no. One, is, is. one is being overworked and the other no, one... Yeah, but hold on. I'm at the third reason. No and, time and whatsoever to even yeah, recover. Yeah, go ahead, the, the, the third reason... Yeah, yeah, so these are, these are the two reasons. Those are uh, the two. Those are the uh, probably smaller reasons. And the third reason and generally the biggest one is anti-blackness. Um, there's some level of like unknowing that someone's from another country. I can pay them less. They're probably going to be harder workers. Like there is a negative stigma with the concept of Black Americans in general in in the United States. That is probably the biggest factor in us having decreased uh, rates of success. Maybe, Maybe but I think there's, I already hand, to... there's already hand selecting on, of yeah. immigrants of like okay you're gonna you're gonna choose immigrants that are like specifically coming from like places that are so like uh are in such a tough position that these people work 16 hours a day. like that's just everybody like that's all immigrants all the immigrants are coming from like countries where it's like you have to work 16 hours like a, a day and then you're coming to the United States like that's not always the case so it's already cherry picking. And then beyond that, it's just like uh, individuals that may be coming from these countries that are like uh, that have certain standards like you would you would hold something similar uh, right here for yourself. If you went to another country and let's say you love video games and uh, you, you moved and you moved to another country and they had a program where everyone could get free video games every week. Uh, and your kid didn't give a shit about that because they grew up in that country and they came, they took it for granted. You too would be sitting there going like, well, we have access to this. No, I don't care what you say. Get that video game. Go pick it up. Just pick it up. Trust me. Pick it up. Like, it's the same kind of, like, it's the same kind of logic. If you come to this country, and then you have more access to something, and you didn't have access to that before, you're gonna push that on your kid and say, you're take, take it, you're taking it for granted, you have access to this. Take advantage of it. Take advantage of it. Because they see the value in something that people may take for granted. Exactly. Not only that, I would like to Same add, um, Pr Prime mentioned earlier about, like, you know, like, if you're coming here fleeing, right? Like, take a look at the state of Washington, Minnesota, like, uh, they have actual refugee cash assistance programs. 
And that's the actual name of it. You can go ahead and look at the Department of, uh, what is it called? Depart I'm Department not of Social and Health Services. Has nothing else I, 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 I and and, and they money. literally give them money. Just making sure y'all know, know that. They give I'm them fucking money. I'm not talking about that, those refugees. There are plenty of people who are leaving, right? For all kinds of reasons. And they aren't counted as refugees. They're immigrants leaving um, terrible situations. that They don't come here as refugees. They don't get that kind of assistance. Like, and they're not doing that well either. I just, no, no, I just want to be clear. They are. Like, some of them are. Like, I mean, these no, things, no. These communicate, a, lot like, of them, um, a lot of them are not doing too well. You well, believe that no one in this country does, there does a lot well of Caribbean money. Americans no, who come wait, here. Wait, wait. They don't get He's uh, never said no one. He said a lot. He, well, he, he, that's, yeah. that's his... A lot of them, a lot of them, a lot of them do work all these shit hours like you said before and they don't make any headway. No, it is no, more than money. Money no, no, is the no. primary I'm thing, but it's about, not the only like, thing. I'm talking about, like, for instance, the children, right? I'm talking yeah, about, children. like, what yeah, they're it passing it on down. That's the point. It, it, means, it Sorry, doesn't mean shit. Hold on. Sorry. Hold on. I'm, talking about, oh, I'm talking about passing on a, uh, uh, a work ethic uh, to their uh, children and uh, uh, an appreciation of education um to their kids right like yeah like when they have, when they're the first generation that comes here uh, i mean they're working crazy hours they're working multiple jobs certainly right but like so we know from immigra in immigrants yeah. in general we know from immigrants in general that they just do better in education right I, they're I, less I, likely to uh, commit crimes I, so, no 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 it means I, nothing so, so, no it so, means so, a lot let yeah, me tell you why everything no, no, hold on hold on hold on access 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 to education I, I don't know where people are getting the, this misinformation from, but once you like a bigger factor is going to be your your gender, your income and anything else like generationally, when you compare a first generation to a second generation, you're more likely as that second generation, whether that be a family or individual, be closer to your first generation. And then the third generation, the gap disappears. Like, like I don't know where this idea that I like, didn't. I didn't... I didn't say it wasn't true. First generation. Yeah, yeah, like I just want to make sure that that four, that four is set because, like, that that's mis misinformation that like righties push on uh, on like on the SDs. Like the second generation immigrants, like, be so proud that you are like a second. Like we hear this every time during like commencement ceremonies and stuff that like your immigrant status means shit when it comes to the outcomes of being an but American. It, United it actually States. helps and, my point though. It actually helps my point. The first generation, like, in parts this onto the second generation, right? Um, like, uh, this appreciation of, of culture, uh, uh, appreciation of education, uh, the, the work ethic and all that, right? But by the third generation, no, now they're Black Americans. Now they have absorbed this culture, and they, they don't have that appreciation anymore, right? Yeah, now they're dead. But, but Immigrant advantage is gone all together. Then, like, in terms of crime stats and all that, you know, it all evens out, just like you said, right? Plus there's well, plus yeah, there's well, a sometimes, a, uh, sometimes it doesn't. But no, I'll, I'll like, like uh -huh, the uh, like, Joe, at least from the studies that I'm remembering, like the biggest di like the differences in achievement are more likely connected to like race, gender, and like your economic status more so than just your immigration status. Like this was something that I, I remember like being researched like in the middle two thousands. Like the 2010, 2010s ish, because there was like this big idea that like being an immigrant, like first generation students in the United States and, and second generations, like these are like you have a significant advantage. But in reality, it's just like your conditions that you pass on to your children are probably going to be conditions that they're going to be living under. And then that was like prime rib in terms of like pushing this idea of meritocracy because like the floor. Like the floor that your parents set you is something that's really difficult to to escape from. Like we see this with if we're using immigrants as the example, like we see this with DACA, that like we're trying to answer the question of does the crime or perceived crime that your parents committed pass on to you as an adult? And there's Democrats and Republicans alike because you have a hard time answering that question. Um, and depending on your ideology, like you're going to come uh, to an answer yourself. That, can we see some of that research? Because I think it might be really interesting. Um, uh, yeah, I, let's, I think. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I got you. I think when it comes to like this conversation, like I, I want to share like a little anecdote of mine. Like my, I think a lot of it has to do with not having access to education and wanting that access. And then once you come to a country where there's so much access to it you're like oh shit we got to take advantage of it because you know back home we remember we didn't have this so we got to take advantage of it because we don't want to take it for granted and so like my mom she didn't finish high school right you know i'm from morocco so my mom she didn't finish high school she actually wasn't allowed to go to school by her dad because she, her dad was you know, like very abusive my grandpa he was telling her you got to stay home 
and, and cook for us and clean the house. And that's all you do. That's your job. That's your role as a lady. Right. And she was like really good at track. She she could have been to the Olympics if she wanted, but her dreams are broken. You know what I'm saying? She's really smart at school, but she, you know, got taken out of school. She came to America. She remembered all that. She pushed that, you know, sense of education towards her children. She took us with her. You know, we, t we start off with nothing. Like we didn't code first. My mom came here first. And then my mom was like, you know, I don't have nobody. I, I do know somebody in America, at least so I'll stay with them for a little bit. And they said, well, you can't stay here for free. You got to do something. So she was like working for free, like basically indentured servant to them. And then like she started doing odd jobs, started working like three jobs a day in, in like newspaper, um, doing some customer service and then babysitting it all at the same day. And so she like worked three jobs, saved enough money for us to come with her. Now we're here. And then she's like, you know what I'm saying? We're finally in America. Like back when I was in Morocco, we was like, oh my God, America would be amazing. My mom's living a dream about it, whatever. Like America is so cool. Like we landed her free, whatever. Like because Mor Morocco was horrible, like comparatively. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of these third world countries, we love looking at America. It's like we see from like, you know, wide eye, like I would love to be in America and stuff like that. Because comparatively, we, we, we don't have as much as America for plenty of reasons, right? Even America may be the reason. So it's like, Obviously, when you come from that mindset, from that background, you're going to have a better outcome just because you're more, more appreciative out of resources. Yeah. And more desperate, too, because just like, you know, coming from nothing like in Morocco, we, we don't we didn't have toilets like even poor people in America have toilets unless you're like homeless. Right. Like we had to poop on the ground or in the hole or in, and we didn't have toilet paper like like this like first world country like what ben was talking about like first world problems a lot of poor first world problems is like rich third world problems you know what i'm saying so that's it's part of the reason you can't say which is all it doesn't matter like obviously motivation matters well uh, we all there's also the influence that the system has to stories like you just portrayed like if yeah. we understand that like bias can manifest itself in different in different ways, like I think it's not that far fetched to believe that a university might accept a student that has a story that you just described over an American from a rural area. And if that's something that makes anybody in chat uncomfortable, I don't know how else to, to explain it. Where like, I think one sure. of the things that is incredibly dangerous is universities and I'm speaking directly about colleges, like glorifying the stories of people who come from disadvantaged positions just so that they know this is an individual that they will not necessarily push through the system in ways that we see as like really nefarious, but you know, might get the front line in terms of scholarship money directly from the school, might be in front of the line in terms of positions and opportunities, whether that be forced in or rather manufactured and making sure that they're the first ones to make it towards towards um, college programs or being invited to college programs or just overtly inviting them to like high opportunities that some Americans may not ever see. Like, Shouldn't people in the most desperate why... situations be in the front of the lines for scholarships? What's that? Shouldn't the people from the most like disparate situations like be in the front of the lines for scholarships? Like if you come yeah. from a really rough back, like isn't that, isn't that what we want? Yes and no. Um, yes ideally, and no. I'd want the smartest. I want the smartest people, and then right after them, the people that come. There's need them, based. Right there's them. different. There's need based scholarships. Yeah. So. Right, but need based scholar people aren't getting full rides on need based scholarships. People are yes, getting full are. rides based on their academic merit to the university. Like there are individuals, absolutely, that are getting full rides based on their their need directly. But I'm talking about full ride where everything is taken care of. For high need students, it's a very high rarity. But yeah. if you have a story that is very, very compelling to enough people, you might get enough people within a community to come together to find those funds for those type of people. Like high schools love those stories. They love those stories about kids who have absolutely nothing and they, they're working their ass off every day. And then they find a way to the crowd. And we see this like when it comes to kids getting blasted and they can't walk all the way up to the, the extreme streams of immigrants from Haiti who lost their entire family from an earthquake. And then some, some affluent um, couple of individuals in their community decide to help this individual through college. Like, the, my um, my concern is that like that type of that type of shit's nefarious to me because like you 
I do think that we should help people whenever we can, but I'm always wary about like feel good stories that get amplified in the news when we do help individuals, when it's just kind of like always feels like, hey, like we help people see like these systems are totally okay, right, guys? Yeah, let's keep the ball moving. So, so the I, point I of, the, the point of those uh, Jay, Jay hasn't had a chance to speak at all. Jay, do you have any? Uh, I'm only going to add to what um, Joe said. It, it's because it's not um, it's not systemic change, right? It's a band aid in the system, and it's not something that is actually helping people it's just helping an individual and it's not helping the collective that's the only thing i was gonna add i agree with that i, I agree like, we we shouldn't downplay band-aids like we we should downplay not you know having the systemic change but there's nothing like the problem isn't the band-aid like around, it, the, no oh, I, no it's not uh, it, 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 it's, it's it's not it's the the sensationalization of that band-aid and not mm -hmm. these yeah if we pretend it's there's of, actually of happening. the problem right i agree we shouldn't well, sensationalize it but we should acknowledge uh, that it exists right and say we can I, recognize the band-aid the band is the band-aid would be the like i would see in this instance would be the problem like uh if 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 it's like a, it's like the idea of like a charity like if uh people will like say that i think we've discussed this almost a year ago on this on these panels it's like uh if if you want to live in a country that doesn't have homeless people right then people say that I want to give money to the homeless when I go outside. This is an active charity. I'm going to help the homeless. What are you doing to create a system that uh, uh, that uh, has like no homeless people out on the street? You are now actually helping. You're 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 helping the other side. You're helping the side that says we don't need to do this because there's acts of charity. There's there's private individuals that will take care of these people and help them. There's church communities or what have you that take care of the homeless instead of advocating for like the thing that will therefore change the system, having a greater systemic change. And but we can't always that, be that's systemic. A false yeah, that's a we false dichotomy. We can't always be systemic because if I'm hungry on the street yeah. and you saying, don't worry, I'm helping you more by like, why would I, I'm going why to would the mayor's I, office. We, we well, I got to meet with order. the that's, mayor's that's, office right that's now. That's the idea. It's like, why would I say that to you? Why, why would you sensationalize? Why would I walk up to you and sell you, hey, I'm not going to help you because I'm helping you more doing this. No, like, why would I even do that? But I'm saying that's because, you're, because that's what you're, you're making it. You're saying No, you what I'm making out to be is that one is actually a solution and the other is making you feel better and making that sure. one individual yeah, feel but, better. But to, I think yeah. to that point, right, it's not yeah. an and or yes problem. Exactly. you can do both at the same time no it's you you can't because you helping that one homeless individual you're helping one homeless individual you're not helping homelessness you're not stopping yes. homelessness but that's helping homeless people homeless doesn't person, hurt. and then yeah. and then and also like work uh, sorry sorry go ahead you can no, you, you go, go, it, you go Jay. it depends on what what issue are you addressing right is your no, issue no. is, is you this go, person it needs food or, or or this person needs a place to stay or the issue is systemic homelessness like the the, the concept of homelessness right those are you, even though they seem similar those are two different issues you yeah, can I mean, you can open no, up your churches. I completely agree, and and I think to Bam's point, it's it's helping that individual, but also at the same time, then advocating after helping that individual, advocating to have some type of uh, systemic action that changes that problem. That at least yeah, for sure. But, so, the, the so, but the band aid, so the band aid, the band -aid is, is eating is giving that person food for a day. That's the band aid. But that, but that it's the same idea as like, all right, you're at a you're at a university, and a lot of universities have these things called like zero waste programs, where students volunteer to like uh, take the trash after like football games or basketball games or what have you, and then they sift them out, they sift the trash out, and for composting, for third party composting, in order to make a case that composting should be done, like. By students doing this every single year, the schools have no incentive to actually go through with a composting program because waste management costs money. And if they already have students doing this every year for free, they don't actually have to. They, the Band-Aid is every single day, every single year. Is so they this don't sounds like, free, this sounds like, like this sounds like this is like the well, free no, shoes. Like, this is like the free <sighs> shoes to argument to Africa argument. We're like giving them free shoes uh, in turn and like hurts the economy of certain African, you know, countries because they're no longer incentivized to buy shoes. Like, uh, yeah, that's an issue. But at the end of the day, uh, it's and 
at the end of the day but what what is your story what, what is what is the what is the extent of your story going to do it's the idea of seeing through what your action is if you help uh, an individual off the street uh perhaps in this instance right and you believe that you're doing this good thing it's a charitable act and then you will also advocate for uh something greater afterwards uh what is the what is the reality of the action you're going to do it's going to be Those. put forth the same way joe lewis described to advocate against greater change and be used as well look at the system as it is in our country we have people that do this and that is the reality of the situation and to ignore that is to ignore history is to ignore what is occurring every week every year in that's 2023 we'll have the no, same that's just that's we'll just the same the, conversation that's 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 people. I mean, I every that's time they put a the camera in your to, face to try to like show to you me? off you could say like I shouldn't have to do this. Like this shouldn't be an issue. Like you can you can advocate while still doing the individual. Like yeah. you, you, I feel like you're like doing the opposite of conservative. Conservatives look, only look, look at look. things on like individual responsibility, and now you're doing like the opposite brain thinking is better to only think it, look at things from a systemic perspective. There there are individual like there are ways we can improve society individually. It doesn't always have to be systemic. Systemic is obviously more important. I think we. Then all it's agree about with the that. goal. It's about the goal. Like what are you trying to accomplish? I, are you trying to accomplish? I, uh, I, I, I know individual grow change. Hungry. He in three days and you know what i'm saying if i can uh, if i can pay ten dollars to get him some waffle house like i'm gonna do that i'm not gonna say what? like but this is gonna hurt the systemic but, issues but, yeah we can look at the black y'all like, 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 been y'all yeah. been interjecting we can look at the we can look oh, at the like it's not about the individual charitable act it's about the amalgamation of all the charitable acts that in itself is a systemic that is a system and those charitable acts inspire further charitable acts. You you may downplay that one meal, you know, for the guy, but that one meal may give that person the energy to stay alive until the next day to reintegrate that person back into the system. Yes, there may be uh, better ways you can help an individual, like you know, giving him a haircut, letting him into your home, giving him training, giving him food and money, and like, like, like for instance, if you have like a person, you know, it's it's similar to what uh dio said uh was it it's dio dream right uh, oh d1 on dream so it's like what dream said when his mother really came in and lived for free but just worked and that person was really just had all their personal needs taken care of for them to just provide a way for hit for that person or you know their adjacent family to do well in society you know there's there's no point in downplaying a band-aid because the band-aid is like a minor systemic change until we get into that that, that one blessing all. that one blessing not generational systemic. change that we are all yeah. hoping for because that stuff doesn't just happen immediately it happens if over you time. if you help yeah, every we, single we have to we have to, we have to be cognizant that a lot of the black american community is still learning from a generation of trauma where people did not have education did not have access at all there is no one giving them a roof over their head there is no one that's like the difference between like the the uh refugee of nowadays versus you know the black american experience those people were completely shut out you know and dead and destitute like so and we are still learning from that and that that thought is still alive that's why i said you know giving money and changing the system doesn't stop the racism but when i asked the question does that prevent people from killing us that was just oh to say that it, oh. <laughs> it was yeah it was, it was yeah it was extreme and yeah, yeah, going, you're, you're, yeah. Throw, you're throwing shit at a wall bro throw yeah, that shit yeah, out like wall. like uh, shut up what do you think of, what do you think about like oh, so if, if you as he hand helped, the mic over if you, if you as he saw and, like help everybody out in your area like, and he's uh, out, not for a second you, you help everybody out in your area right and you uh and then you uh let's say uh you individually um, give like uh, shelter to everybody in your whole, like your whole area, your whole county. That's or a what huge have you. systemic change. Is literally what churches. Yeah, yeah, let's say you did it. You did that, right? Now, at that point, like, what do you think would then happen? So, on the contrary, if we don't do it, they remain on the street, and as nobody's more saying that. Yeah, that's nobody's saying that. Well, 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 because it's very likely that uh, if somebody, if I don't do it, it's very like I'm not going to wait for the next man. Or the thing, no, 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 though, and that's a failure know. of your government. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, we're going to die. die. Yes, we're going to die. That's my answer. That's the whole point of it not being systemic, right, Azzy? Let me answer. No, I'm going to I'm going to cover this. I got a great answer. You're going to react. You're going to react. The difference of being 
Are you gonna, are you gonna, systemic right. issues. The fact that if you were to go out in your in your community, open and do all this charitable work, right? Once you go away, the system dies because it's not an actual, it's not a codified system. The system we're talking about is the federal government, something that's a little more self-sustaining through taxes, right? If systemic changes are things that are going to continue without you, Azzy, and that's what we're talking about. You can if, have first off, have I donate? Have I donated to food food kitchens? Uh, to soup kitchens? Have I donated my time? Absolutely. Or those systemic fixes? Hell fucking no. I, I kept saying yeah, that's what I'm saying. But B-more, so what you, 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 you are here, we shouldn't do it. You have to no, remember. No, 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 no. I, wait, wait, wait. I never said we shouldn't do it, right? If I, if, why would I advocate saying that we shouldn't do something when I go out and do it myself, right? My problem is that as he is showcasing that him going out here and doing these good things is somehow a systemic change. That's what I'm addressing right now. I didn't be. say it. Like, it, was slip, it, uh, it was a slip of words. I don't think he really meant. I don't think that's what it is. I don't slip any words. Every word I said was purposeful. No, he I'm talking about as Azzy. I don't think. Oh, no, no, no. Meant, I don't think he meant systemic. Like I'm not saying it's what you're thinking. You know, TV, yeah. Speak for yourself wrong. again. This is my third time telling you this. No, but you're okay. honing in on this one thing, and you're derailing the whole conversation just to hone in Azzy's on systemic. It doesn't man. matter. Azzy's but okay, grown. but as he is a handsome, college-educated black man, he can hold his own. Yes, I can. So be more sub cut me off and let me talk. That's Here the word. Azzy, Azzy, I, I really want to understand where your floor is first. Is that okay if I just ask like a simple question here? All right, after right. I do with B more, you can ask your question. Is that all right? Okay. Sure. Yeah, so B more, I'm not saying it's on the grand level of a government systemic change. I understand that. I know I understand there's a difference between that, but I'm saying that that's a social that's a social system. There are so there are still social dynamics that are systems that are at play. What's the institution that are, that's doing it? What's the system? The institution. I mean, what's this? You know what, B Joe? Ask your question. Do you understand? Like, Thank you. Do you understand Joe, that? So <laughs> that's nonsense. Right. I'm so busy trying uh, to argue with shit. Bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, what oh, the oh, fuck do oh, you think oh, we're oh, here oh, for, buddy? The systems oh, oh, can oh, talk oh, about the away. questions I was asked. And people need to make better fucking solutions here. Let's talk about it. You know, make better points in a fucking debate, bro. Even if a system implemented it, the system can take it away. What's Joe's question? It's always been a debate. All right, so, it's so always been people making shit Azzy. points. It's always been out on it. And what, what's the debate, though? What's the, the debate? The debate is Azzy shit posting. Uh, that's the oh debate. Oh I didn't even. I don't know. I'm not going to make a diss track at this point. Put that shit on. Put that beat on. Hook it up. I don't get it. The so the issue that I have with what you said, Azzy, and like the reason, like the point that I was trying to make earlier, maybe it wasn't clear, is that I don't think chair like while charitable actions are are noble for any community to do, they don't really solve the problem that might be at foot. So the example I'll give is in terms of um, feeding kids in schools. Right now in New Jersey, the average amount of school lunch debt that's passed on from one year to another is about $8.5 million. So do you think that that's a number that the United States, in this case, like the state of New Jersey should just eat every year? Uh, I feel like there's certain, there's certain things, it's like, it's like a cost benefit, right? There's certain costs that we have to incur to make sure that students are able to eat. Because sometimes those meals are the only meals that these students get throughout the day. Like I'm reminded all constantly, like some of these kids do not eat at home or, or the, the, sure. the, uh, the, 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 the nutritional foods that they should be getting. They're not getting at all. All of them, they're just eating like, you know, Lay's chips. Oreos and uh, and then at dinner they're eating popcorn while they're watching a movie and doing homework. Like uh, those things, it's it's a cost that we're incurring now. It's like debt, unfortunately. It's a, for sort of a bad debt, but hopefully, you know, and and then like keyword hope. You're hoping that we incur this bad debt long enough so that along as generations pass, that we're able to pay off that debt. It may never come, but at least those students were able to eat a meal, you know, and continue on. Because yeah, systems are made up of individuals. Are you saying to invest in the future? It's a it's a, a strong investment invest, in the future. You're, it's a huge investment in the future. Food, uh, mental health, money. I agree with B more. We need to increase, you know, funding. You know, in certain areas, not Joe, all areas. Joe, but, you made a great point about how you know you're talking about school lunch. The Black Panther Party did a charitable act by implementing school lunch as private citizens. And then the government was looking at the Black Panther Party doing that and being successful with it. Like, hey, 
maybe we could do um, school lunch to our kids as well. So it's like, it's not impossible for private citizens to implement something systemic. The Black Panthers after that. That's in one yeah. community. Yeah. Entire system is snipped. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. The system was a snip. We have school, free yeah, school lunch so right I, now. No, no, no. The system that they established was snip. Yeah, and then, yeah. yeah. But then it, so my... it, trans it transferred to the government doing it instead of the private citizens. So that's Pri the whole point. Prioritizing of black people like the Black Panthers did? Yeah. I don't think the system did that. It's not. <laughs> okay. didn't say that. Come on, people. Right? Oh, no, 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 that's the point. That's no, what I'm talking the... about, bro. Wait, 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 Go ahead. Go ahead, I agree bro. with you. I, I agree with you on one aspect, and I think yeah, as you knocked the same door that, that I was kind of trying to knock at, is that for me, like, it doesn't make any sense to me why we legally force children from the ages of six to 16 to be in educational institutions. Like that's just a mandate that's in a vast majority of states. Sometimes it ends at 15 and some, sometimes it's to 17. So from six to 16, we got these kids on the hook. And for me, at the very least, we should feed them. I want to go as far as to say that it should be completely free at the point of cost. So like when a student walks up, gets whatever they want, there's no cost occurred to that student, period. I don't think it should even go to the parents either. I think that's just the cost of doing business in terms of an institution. Now, in the short term, there's a lot of, there's a lot of schools that are not down for something like that, for whatever reason to their own. And I say, okay. Fine. In the short term, we have a lot of students who are experiencing different levels of food insufficiency financially. And we have, I think, like 2 million students suffering from food debt. In New Jersey, the cost every year to school lunch debt is around 8.5 million. For me, I think Azzy agrees with me here that I, I think- I used to that, be one of those students. Yeah, I, <laughs> I thought it was free I, yeah. and I ate the lunch and yeah. I just come home with a $30 debt. debt. Yeah, I just think that's a cost that you're that schools are just gonna have to pocket. Like, and the L isn't really gonna go to the schools. It's probably gonna have to be front. The loss is probably gonna have to go to the state, and that's gonna be something that each individual district is gonna have to be very, very meticulous on in terms of reporting. And if they don't want to be meticulous on reporting and think that's a not a lot, a lot of paperwork, I'm sure it might be a lot faster in just finding the however billion it costs per year and just making sure that's funded, maybe federally, but. That's a that's a whole other I, thing. I agree, and and to add to that point, it's like we're talking about this e like e and or either or thing, like Jay was talking about. But the 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 private citizens can work with the government, and the government can fund private citizens, right? For example, like here in San Francisco, we have a bunch of feed the streets program, you know, feed the homeless program, and you know, resources program, and you know, nonprofits doing this work, and these nonprofits are getting directly funded by the government and the government are funding these nonprofits every year, uh, millions of dollars. And I'm, I'm working it and I'm working it. I'm working in the government right now. And I'm looking at the numbers going like from the, uh, from the government directly, you know, from the budget directly to these nonprofits. And it's like these, uh, these nonprofits started first out doing these things and, you know, amongst the community first. And then they was like, okay, let's apply for some grants for the federal government. And then they're doing this every year. And now the government and the private citizen are working together. It's, it's not, Oh, the government got to do it. The private citizens got to do it. The private citizens can do it and then get help from the government. And then now we're doing it together. And Dream's example was actually the, perfect when he brought up the Black Panthers and, and like one? school lunches. The charity is the middleman. They were, um, they, the, the charity, I, I think, um, how, how, school that, lunch that, was that, inspired uh, directly uh, because of. Yeah, but how is, well, we know you, you were, we know that. But other than that, like, well, how is that the perfect example? It's like, well, it's that's a perfect like, example of like, because well, you, because you specifically said that doing these private things are called hurt. The, um, are hurtful the they're a problem you didn't say they were neutral like which and uh, i love said this, this. You, i you love the example they harm, but yeah that, but that, i like their I private love the example of the black i love the example of the black panthers so are you saying more people should do exactly what the black panthers did uh to get the the outcomes that we got or would you like it to happen through legislation i, I just i'm i'm i don't need because right now it's solution. saying it's like you're I'm, saying that i want something to be better like, there is no perfect solution. I want, 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 yeah, like this is a perfect example is well, like the well, Black Panthers right. gave us this. This is what you should do. And then 
not it's acknowledging a very good I'm example. <laughs> which could be, it was pushing back against your point. Cheating children is not what is not the downfall of the Black Panther. To do. Well, we can we can recognize like if we were to use the Black Panthers as an example, like we had to set the floor for a few things. I think the most important thing is that the Black Panthers were able to operate in terms of how they're able to feed commu their communities and communities yeah. probably because we, we did have Panthers in Jersey, but they were separate from the political apparatus when it came to how these things were distributed. And one of the things that were in direct combat, especially in my area, when it came to Panther advocacy, especially when it came to um, breakfast programs, was the fact that like schools, once they realized that another apparatus was feeding kids, then that's when they really wanted to start getting into the game. And that's why like now you see like why widespread breakfast programs in Jersey and like the uh, like depending on which BLA or Panther you talk to in my state they'll say that like it had to do with us and some say well it had nothing to do with us and some will say COINTELPRO but it's like, like oh, my, wait, my frustration my, my frustration is that like the 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 Panthers were knocking on cer certain doors right like the biggest door I think is that there are problems within the system and they need to be resolved. And I think that when it came to like feeding kids, like they revealed like this is a problem for a lot of individuals, not exclusively black Americans. But then like once it came to the, for the legislation to hit the road of like, okay, how can we like fund this thing? And like to make it a more sustainable option, then there's a lot of like hurdles. That's why I said, I think like for me, pushing the word to be low cost or free is like the best step moving forward. Granted, hopefully, Hopefully, they can do a research. Like, hopefully, the USDA is doing research of their own program, which would be nice in terms of like free lunches across the United States. Because right now, under COVID, it's going to probably approach the second year where school age students aren't going to have to worry about the cost of, of lunches. And this is just going like under the radar of all these conservatives. But then you'll hear every once in a while, like a righty say something like, well, my kid's paying for school lunch. And it's like, oh, so you're saying that your district didn't Denied report the funds? That Wait, yeah, and, and Joe, yeah, but but Joe, Joe but the, point, though, the fact that this is being point, done, and like, then, which is way better temporarily, it's not even like a systemic change too, because it's just like yeah. eventually it, all, these things are gonna moonlight. All these COVID provisions be, are gonna end. It could be strategically temporary. Legislation. It right. could be more, be more. It could be strategically temporary, right? For example, Joe, um, to to add on to your point, so go, go against what Wiggle said earlier, is that. There are there could be private citizens doing something in an organized manner to to gather data, right, and to present this data to the government and say, "Look, we've done it." So I know you asses can, right? And this is being done with universal basic That's income enrichment, yeah, so right? Why shouldn't they get paid for this labor? Sure, I don't, I don't oh, mind. I have no so then idea why wouldn't it just be a government, job. No saying, a government job? Thank you very much. No one says it's not a government job. We're saying, we're saying that. We're saying that. Why? Why do you? Why is it all or nothing? Why can it we be nothing? Not all or nothing. Because because you, 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 you guys are simply the more, more, just, the more you, you simply be federalized. Like, the, 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 the more, but no one's disagreeing with that. We're saying that we can't do that right now. So why can't we do what we can? We go. Nobody's oh telling you not God. to donate. It's exactly what you're saying. <laughs> no, it's not. Tell me where I said that. Wiggle yeah. said, Wiggle said, he legitimately said, this stuff yeah. is the problem. No. I said, do, do anything is a problem. problem that's not perfect. The only no, logical no, reason, the only logical <laughs> conclusion is, stop All right, I get it. I'm <laughs> saying it's already Avengers. So Wigglypuff, you put me to sleep. Wigglypuff, you put me to sleep. Nobody said no. Be more, you're not going to, you're not going to, you're not going to black us. You're not going to black us. Right here. Yeah. I wanna, I wanna, trying to I'm black and Wiggly Puff is trying to. Yeah, yeah, I feel like I like to defend Wiggly. I want this guy's name. This is what happens. You guys need players and most players. As he stops shit posting. I would say. Okay. All right. Look, um, we're uh running out of time for this topic any which way. Um, let's uh let's move on. Um, Joe, 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 yeah, I want to read for something that the Dream said, and then you can fight Wiggle as much as you want. He seems to have the gauntlet right now with all five stones, six stones. I don't know how many they are, but basically, like something that concerns me in terms of the USDA situation, right? Like, just to be clear, to set the floor for people who don't know, if you reported, like you, all your district had to do TLDR is report the need, and then grab and go lunches were covered. Period. Um, now, my concern is is that like, and this is happening despite supply chain shortages, so, so despite quality of lunch issues, which are problems in certain districts, like this is still happening regardless. And something 
something that I'm hoping is that there's somebody within the USDA tracking this information to eventually bring forth as an argument to fund this indefinitely. Because something that I think is going to happen under COVID, and this might be why some people might think like even this current USDA thing is a band-aid, and maybe I think BMORE feels this way as well, is that like these funds and this support is going to dry up eventually That's it. like there are so many districts excited about we have all this funding to pay for guidance counselors and teachers and it's like yeah that's really exciting until you have to pay them beyond their contract and then you want to give them like things like tenure and all these nice things but if you don't have the funds to give your now tenure guidance counselor three to five years in a contract that they're satisfactory they're just going to leave your district to go to one that actually is going to pay them what you need. And that's like the one thing that's really frustrating because also under the ESSER funding, like we found that a vast majority of districts are paying for guidance counselors and um, psychiatric staff. And like that shit's not cheap under normal circumstances. It's going to go away. And now, and now through, yeah, now through emergency funds, you're having this, but it's like, what's going to happen when these funds dry out? So like, I'm hoping hoping that there's somebody that's not Bernie Sanders who's like keeping and not AOC and not Ilhan Armbar and any of these like dumb fucks that are slowly becoming a manifestation of Nancy Pelosi diet Corey version you know, and Cory Booker like somebody's paying attention to these things so that they can bring forth these arguments oh. in a post-COVID landscape of saying like hey if we did this under COVID then we could probably do this okay. all